Hey Pokemon fans, General Tabby here, and today I'm going to be going through a Pokemon theory that suggests that Cubone is in fact a Kangaskhan, or a young Kangaskhan. Whilst looking into this theory, I happen to find two separate theories that both suggest they are not related, but both have a very, very similar issue. Before I get started on this theory, I just want you guys to know that I'm a massive Pokemon fan, and that in no way am I slating the series with my results, so bear with me, and please enjoy. So guys, let's get straight into this theory, because there is quite a few areas I want to explore with it. And the first one, very basic. The colour, the body size, and the skull size of these Pokemon is all different. Yes, there are features on the skull which are similar to the skull shape of Kangaskhan, but if you look at the colour of both baby Kangaskhan and normal, it's completely different. Also, the skull of Kangaskhan would not fit so perfectly on a cubo, so I think this area is pretty much done. Moving on to the next part of the area, I'm going to take you to Pokemon Origins. As you can see here, in Pokemon Origins, there is a scene that shows Cubone with his mother, or her mother. The only problem with this, Cubone is meant to wear the skull of their dead mother, and here they are both perfectly well and alive. That is until Team Rocket come along and decide to kill Cubone's mother, whilst Cubone is fleeing away. So this throws a lot of questions to me as to why Cubone's able to wear the skull of their mother when they're still alive. It, it doesn't, to me, make sense. So this made me look further into this, and again, I was startled when I realised that in breeding, a similar thing happens where a Cubone is born instantly with a skull on. This also happens with Kangaskhan, where if you breed a Kangaskhan, it is born already with a baby Kangaskhan in its pouch. Now to me, that's not how breeding works, but this is the design of these two Pokemon, and that is how they are always seen. So, moving on from that scene a little bit, we now will see that there is some flaws emerging, and there is also a pattern which suggests that they're not related, but they both have a very similar issue. A design flaw, if you will. And no, I am not slating people at Game Freak, I am just simply saying that I think as they were making the game, they have built two separate Pokemon, maybe with the idea of them being connected in some way, but I think that's long since gone. And I know there are you out there who will argue the point that Missing Note was in fact meant to be this link between them, or maybe some kind of proof that there was meant to be a connection between them at some point, but I think Game Freak have, you know, give that up a long time ago, and hence why Missing Note is a glitch in the game and not part of the actual, you know, generic lore of the game. So let's just put that aside and the fact that Missing Note is not meant to be there. So, if this is all true what I'm saying, why wasn't the game fixed? Or why wasn't this issue fixed? And I think it's because Gen 1 was released, everyone loved the game, and then Gen 2 came out and it kept going and kept going, and it was extremely successful. Now people only started emerging with Pokemon theories a bit after it was released, and it only started becoming, you know, super popular when people started looking at all the different aspects of the different games and figuring out things they didn't understand and things they wanted to understand. So Game Freak have kind of just let this play out because number one, they've made these, you know, awesome characters for a game, and yeah they have some flaws, but they made them too long ago to really change. If they change stuff now they'd have to, you know, kind of rewrite the lore of the previous games, and I know there are parallel worlds and alternate timelines in the Pokemon world, which leads us to the next part of this video. You see, I think that they really have thought about Cubone and Marowak and their own evolution line without Kangaskhan, and I think this has been proven now in Sun and Moon, because if you look here, this is a Marowak from Sun and Moon. His typing is Ghost and Fire, which is different than normal, but is it really 
that different from the previous Marowak scene in Pokemon Origins? No, because if you look here, Marowak is a ghost and fire type. It even states in Pokemon Origins that Marowak is a ghost, and that is why it's in the Lavender Town Ghost Tower. So, that pretty much is definite proof that his typing is there. And the purple flame, I'm just speculating that that is a form of fire. So, I think that shows he has got his own evolution chain, and they're a separate species. You can even see this in the fact that Kangaskhan, when it mega evolves, the baby Kangaskhan leaves the pouch, and it's almost at its next stage. And it looks nothing, again, like Cubone. And the fact neither of them have a front pouch, to me, shows again, which they at most could be distant relatives which just took a different evolution of the line. Anyway guys, that's the end of this video, and that's the end of my theory on this. If you guys have your own opinion on this, or your own theory, please leave a comment and we'll debate about it. Anyway, like always guys, take care and I'll see you in the next video.